three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God, that's cold. Ooh. Welcome back to You Betcha Radio Podcast, coldest podcast in all the Midwest. I'm Miles, You Betcha Guy, here with Ryan, the t shirt guy. We are presented by Ice Mountain, and we are back, and we are live, and we are here in the studio ready to rock and roll. Guys, I am back from vacation better than ever. Um, Ryan? Jet lagged all fuck or no? I knew I'm coming out of it a little bit. I was jet lagged yesterday, but I'm getting better now. Out of your stupor. Yep, exactly. Um, And we talked about the, uh, me and Ryan's bet on the regular podcast, right? Or was that just nah, a Patreon? Pa- Patreon? Oh, you started on the regular. Patreon. Oh, talked about it on Patreon. And yeah. So the regular audience doesn't know about it. Okay. Well, guys, me and Ryan had a bet. So if you want to find out about the bet that him and I had, you got to go listen to Patreon this week. I did pay last too. week. I paid. Well, now they know you lost. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't know the bet though. No fucking tease whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Patreon thing. But. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of there was something I was supposed to talk about on the podcast that I forgot about that Ann told me to talk about. So maybe I'll text her and Jared can introduce the first segment. Yeah. Uh, stuff we do that our wives should think is impressive. Nailed it, Jared. Yes. Oh, you so fucking service. actually, yeah, yeah. actually, okay. wife should think that, that was impressive. <laughs> yeah. Stuff we do that our wives should think is impressive. Yeah, yeah and they just don't for some reason. Sometimes mm-hmm. it doesn't even get acknowledged. I know it makes me sad. Uh, my first one on, on the list: when I make a really cool catch or a really cool throw of something in the house, she doesn't think it's impressive. Mm. Yeah, like sinking, like uh, if you're throwing a bottle away, yeah, in the garbage can, like right here. Mm-hmm. You want to zoom out, Jared? You can. Oh, sorry. You better make it now. A lot of build up. Uh, let's see. Can you get the garbage can so. in the camera? You could do Tyler's cam. Oh, fuck. This is this is bad radio. <laughs> do you want me to move the garbage? Just can take in? out your phone and record it on your phone. Okay. Right, there we go. Sorry about that, <laughs> Jared. That's about, I mean, about this is about what? So you so, throw. So you're saying when you do this, Tyler? Yep. Damn it! it went if behind. it was against the wall, I would have made that. Which honestly was impressive that I made it behind it. Oh, Fucking two. <laughs> oh, hey, I was drinking that one. Not anymore. <laughs> I was drinking full beer. Full beer, yeah. <laughs> Cash! Cash! <laughs> I tried to go for the bank. So it's that was five o'clock. Yet. Guys, did you see that? That was impressive. <laughs> I think it is. I, I thought it was. I'm trying to think of what, like, but my like, wife hucked something at me yesterday, like, to just give it to me, and I fucking nabbed it. Reflex out of the air. Yeah. She didn't, and she it was react. just like, so I had to make, I'm like, did you just see me catch that? Yeah. And there was nothing. Like, I got I'll, nothing. I'll be playing football in the yard with my kids making sick one handed grabs and she doesn't say shit. Yeah. I feel that. God, or in the same vein of throwing at something, have you ever been like bringing like something up to your mouth and it falls out of your hand and then you yeah. catch it again before it hits yeah. the ground? It's athletic, mm-hmm. especially at our age. It's, it's athletic. Yeah. And you got to like check to see if you have webs because your spidey sense caught that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My kid um, fell off a chair the other day and I caught him with my leg. Like I, I, yeah. I like, I like soften the blow by catching him with my leg. That was, I mean, it's, I guess and it's just a dad thing. Did you get a pat on the back? Didn't get anything. Super dad. They should think that's impressive. Dad reflexes is what we should just call it. Mm-hmm. Dad flexes. Um, I would agree with that. Um, one thing that I think that my wife should think is impressive is when I successfully whistle back a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I had that one on yeah. the list. I, mean, I don't think they, they don't understand. They, it's <laughs> how do we get our wives to understand the art of backing up a trailer and the sacredness that it involves? So we got to stop coming to their rescue when they need to back up a trailer. My wife is never in a situation <laughs> Mine <isn't either. laughs> that she needs to manufacture back up. one where she's got to back yeah. up a trailer and don't bail her out. Let her try to do it. <laughs> And then she'll respect it. Yeah, right I got. I don't know what situation I would get her in that she needs to back up a trailer. I'll, okay, you hook up your truck to the trailer, leave it at your house. I'll pick you up, bring you to work, and be like, "Hey, Ann, can you put the trailer in the garage before I get home today?" And then just see what happens. <laughs> well, I don't want to harm my house, so maybe I'll like, <laughs> "Hey, honey, I hooked a trailer up to your car." <laughs> 
and <laughs> good I, luck getting to work. And I filled your car with a bunch of shit. So when you go to Target today, <laughs> you're gonna have to just throw all your stuff in the back of the trailer. Yeah. So yeah, if she pulls into the garage, then and you hook a trailer up, she has to back it up to shut the garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So I mean, that, that's not a bad option at all. Not a bad option. Yeah, we'll manufacture some sort of scenario where they have to use back up a trailer. And then they'll get it. And mm -hmm. then they'll be like, oh, my God, let's go inside. <laughs> <laughs> let's go inside and look at trailer sales. Trailer will be one. the only thing backing up. <laughs> <laughs> you hitch my trailer anytime. That's good. Uh, um, in that same vein, I think another one is my wife. Yeah. I think my wife should find it impressive if I last more than two minutes, but apparently not. Fucking preach. I mean, that is that in itself is impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even just yeah, over a, over two hundred seconds is like that's good. That's impressive. That's yeah. sick. Sicko that's mode. sick. Yeah, absolutely, Jared. Sicko <laughs> mode. So. Yeah. That one doesn't really need explaining. I think we all get that one. Yeah, everyone's down on their head right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something something that I do that I think my wife should think is impressive is uh flipping pancakes in the pan <laughs> or flipping an omelet without having to use a spatula. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do. It it really is. Um, not only you gotta get like the the jerk of it correct to like flip it up the side, mm -hmm. but you also have to have the catch right. And the amount of times I've fucked up a good egg on the flip, it's you're flipping eggs like oh, just yeah. regular. Like eggs. if I'm trying to do like a a nice runny yolk, but both a fried egg runny yolk situation, I I want to flip it because I don't want to do just sunny side up. I want both sides of my egg fried, but I want the yolk still a little runny. No, I'm, so I'm with you. That's how I cook my yeah. eggs, too. Yeah. yeah. So, Why don't you just use a spatula, though? Yeah, because well, it's cooler. If you, yeah, It should cool. be impressive. If now, you that also it. That, you also need light hands for that, too, because if yeah. it just slaps down mm -hmm. on the on the pan, it's going to... it's gonna Yolk's fucked. Now, I don't, I, think you, to... I don't think you've ever done that, to be honest. What? Flip an egg without a spatula. I've done it like once or twice. I try it. I try it every single time. And that's what makes it impressive. Yeah. Okay. Now I will have okay. to say, my wife actually would think that was impressive mm. because she likes to do that with a pan full of hash browns. Oh, which I actually think is really impressive. That's like all, the, yeah. they, they get them all flying up in the air. Well, she literally just does one flip. So it's like she'll just go boom and it'll go like a foot in the air and come down. Yeah. Hell if you yeah. let him crisp up enough on the one side, then it'll just become like one big yeah. fucking hash brown pancake. And the first time she pulled it out, I was like blown away. What? <laughs> what? So what she think is impressive if you can do it? Because she can already do it. So it's not. Well, yeah, I don't know. Then it's like this whole judgment of mm -hmm. did you do it as good as I can mm -hmm. do it? Which yeah. is a whole nother can of worms. <laughs> I'll even just like I'll, I'll take like I'll grab the pancake with the spatula and then just like flick it up and down multiple times and i can't even get catch it behind your back yeah I, it between I, the legs i can't even get any reaction out of that <laughs> that's a shame your you kid though so, gotta be amazed my kid oh he's i have like, a dive he's, his kid's like he's a fucking wizard <laughs> like, all, all this stuff that we're yeah. complaining that our wives don't think are impressive our kids do kids yeah. for sure do yeah for sure it's, uh the kids are kind of like that meme of the cow staring at someone that walks over the cattle like uh, oh yeah the cattle oh, guard it, cattle yeah. thing and he's like how the fuck did he not die <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's what's going through every single he's a wizard <laughs> he has magic he just flipped that it's not the one it's the wizard <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> same hey same thing my wife doesn't think it's impressive when i steal her nose <laughs> or or randomly find something behind her ear. <laughs> she doesn't think that's impressive, but kids do. Yeah. <laughs> she says I could just skip down the hallway and my kid would think it's amazing. <laughs> like, Fuck yeah. How is he, he moving his legs in that formation? Yeah. Uh the shadow box it is uncanny. <laughs> what about you, Jared? Or or the fake throw? We'll always get them. You know, you throw it and they turn around and then you put it behind your back. That yeah. gets my wife doesn't think that's funny at all. 100% of the time. <laughs> Ryan. Yep. You know what? I, this is a real thing. I, My wife does not think it's impressive when I will take a full bottle of water and chug the whole thing in one thing. I would, and I, would I would disagree with her. Oh, I've done it many times, especially the squirt bottle. Yeah. Go, 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 go. 
Uh, wow, that was cool too. Sink it. Oh, that would have been sick. It went in. Not on video. <laughs> the first part was impressive. The second part yeah. wasn't. But that's a real thing. I will take a full bottle of ice mount and just slam the whole thing in one shot. And she's just, she kind of looks at me and is like, was that necessary? And then I say necessary. <laughs> necessary for me to drink the whole bottle? <laughs> No, but it's sterile, sterile like and it. I like the taste. Uh, you ever do the uh, not the not with the nipple bottles, but like the regular twelve ounce bottles where you crush it into your mouth? Oh yeah, I've crushed some stuff into my mouth before, <laughs> and mostly ice mountain bottles. Yep. Sometimes I'll suck so hard the bottle will go through the hole into my mouth. <laughs> turn it you you inside out. Turn it inside out. I'll turn yeah. it inside out. That's how much I suck down ice mountain. <laughs> I'll suck the guts right out of that fucker. A uh, fricker. <laughs> you don't think we're serious about water? You're fucking wrong. <laughs> Fr- fricking wrong. You're fricking wrong. <laughs> you fricker. <laughs> so, guys, next time that you want to stick it to your wife, just slam a bottle of ice mountain, and then do a huge burp in her face and say, "That was impressive." I'm going upstairs. She's probably not impressed because wives <laughs> never drink any goddamn water. That is true. We do need to start a PSA to all the wives out there. Drink more water. That yeah. Don't have I- a headache. Ice just, Mountain's yeah, next campaign should be hydrate your wife. <laughs> do buy one, get one water bottles. It really should. Buy one, get one. One for you, one for her. Yeah. You should start slamming Stanley's of Ice Mountain just to show her how impressive that is. <laughs> you should see me turn one of those inside out. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know if I want to know what else you can turn inside out. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> so, guys, show off in front of people. Do Slam it. a whole bottle in one one go, and uh, <laughs> your wife won't be impressed, but we will. Mine would be like uh, like working the remote. So, like when we watch something like on DVR and like perfectly skimming through like the commercials to get back to the show mm, mm. that is good you know like like uh being on volume duty at all yeah. times yep. like volume spikes that's me like if i'm laying in bed wa- watching tv the vol i have the remote with my f- with my thumb on the volume at all times <laughs> see like this could yeah, be a that's a, kind of an insane move <laughs> it's no, impressive I respect, though i respect it I'm because about- uh, commercials especially can like the sound just sometimes spikes mm-hmm. out of nowhere especially like, on streaming services like yeah. hulu live or youtube tv Boom. yeah yeah, the, the commercial audio is not bad. Terrible. Well, yeah. Or Every like, time I'm doing that, and like like a gunshot goes off on the TV, I always scramble in to find the remote. <laughs> so maybe I do need to adopt the yeah. one finger on the volume at all times. Yeah. So I think I told you guys this off pod, uh, but I was at the dentist the other day, and they don't do regular TV on the dentist TVs anymore. It was Amazon Prime, so they said here, pick something to watch. And so I picked sure. Grown Ups 2 because I thought it was the most background noise movie that I could possibly have. And there's a scene where there that's a bunch of ladies at a yoga studio and the creepy janitor comes in and he's like, hey, the instructor told me to warm you guys up. So he's doing a <laughs> fake warm up. So these ladies boobs are just bouncing all over the place. And I'm in the dentist Hell chair yeah. with the screen six inches from my face. And waiting for the Novocaine to kick in. And I'm like scrambling for the remote on the fucking dentist tray. So no one comes in there and thinks I'm just perving out to like <laughs> yoga boobs. You should just close your eyes pretend you're sleeping. Yeah. That never happens to me because I never have to wait for Novocaine because I don't have to do any mm. dental work whatsoever. Oh, I thought you were going to say you just raw dog all your... <laughs> No, I don't. All oh, your procedures. I've never had a procedure in my mouth once ever. Really? Oh, they get my wisdom teeth out, but that's Plastic. surgery, not a procedure. I still got all four of mine. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. You, you put, think like, you'd be smarter out. then? <laughs> uh, that's kind of a good one because it was so dumb. <laughs> uh, that's another thing. Dad jokes. Yeah, they mm. don't like them. Sad. Unimpressed. Very. I think another thing that my wife should think is impressive is slamming like 15 beers with the with the guys. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> or even like like there was one time I was like, yeah, this is, I put on a clinic like I, I remember the the all the details. Right. Of like me and two buddies, we all each of us put down a 30 rack in one day. 
And she was not impressed. <laughs> if I had the opposite of impressed. Yeah. Would almost she have been almost in- disgusted? And yeah. I was very confused. <laughs> Drinking 30 beers in a day is an unbelievable. <laughs> yes, it is. Like, even if you don't like the fact that someone drank 30 beers and they're just being a drunk ass, it's still impressive. Very. Mm-hmm. And then to go on a step further, one of the guys that I, that day that also drank a 30 rack. He seemed to be unfazed by drinking Oof. 30 beers, and that was like the next level of impressive. <laughs> he prestige. Yeah. <laughs> there are people like that, though, that are like, they're blacked out, but seem completely normal. Mm-hmm. They're enigmas. We should start. Anytime we start doing this stuff, guys, we got to start like a like a Boy Scout badge system for ourselves. Yeah. You know what I Like... Men should have their own Boy Scout badge system mm-hmm. for doing impressive things. Yeah, like we get them on video games. We get badges for doing cool shit yeah. on video games. Why shouldn't we get them in real life? Hey, guys, this weekend I backed up a trailer and then boom, I get a badge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like a motorcycle gang. You like got to do yeah, certain like shit to patches. get your patches. Yeah, yeah and, and get the regular badge and then you get like stripes below it for every single time <laughs> yeah, that you do every it. Every 30 rack you have it looked like my letterman in high school just yeah. littered with badges. Somebody on Patreon said that we should all just wear our letterman's jacket on a Patreon funny. episode. Wait, I don't have a I don't have a leatherman. We're, really? Or a letterman? Mm-hmm. I have a leatherman. No, it's a le- yeah, yeah. You got a letterman. letterman. You could just bring your leatherman and we'll wear our letterman. Yeah, those are that would be are, very funny. Yeah. Lettermans are dumb. I don't disagree. It was the I got mine my senior year. And it was the first time I could tell that my dad was like really excited to give me a gift. I did not want a Letterman, so I was just like, "Thank you, I can wear this for four months." Because where do you then, get, where do you even get them at? Is the school give them to you, or do no, you gotta you get go? Them at a you sporting goods store. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the school gives you like your patches to sew on as yeah. you earn them. Yeah, my senior photos are gonna look so sick. <laughs> yeah, I did yeah. not wear mine in my senior <laughs> pictures. I got not to brag. I got one when I was a freshman, so I wore it for four years. Well, I got a letter and well, I mean, grade. anyone can buy a Letterman's jacket. <laughs> well, you got to get your letter. Yeah, but you could still just go buy a Letterman's jacket. It would be hilarious. Yeah. If but some... I had a letter on mine. <laughs> I'm would... sure this morning concern would just sew a letter on for you too. It would be <laughs> hilarious <laughs> if somebody <laughs> bought one and that did never letter. They were yeah. just wearing it letterless. Yeah. Letter, letterless jacket. A letter boy jacket instead yeah. of a letter men's jacket. <laughs> It's like, well, yeah, it's easy to get a letterman's jacket. You just go buy it, you know? Uh, I think my wife should be more impressed when I do household chores that I never usually do. Like, if you catch like me, ma- like, if I make the bed, that should be impressive. <laughs> I never fucking make the bed. My my wife would actually be a little annoyed. Because mm. no, you didn't she, do no, it right. She wouldn't. No. no. <laughs> You're trying to convince yourself. Annoyed if that. you made the bed? <laughs> well, like, I made the bed the well, other day. We, she doesn't make the bed either, is kind of what I was mm. getting at. She's, oh. she's not necessarily going to think it's that impressive. She would more so be like, either like, what'd you do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> or like, that's yeah. not going to help you get laid. Or <laughs> be like, what did you like hit your head? <laughs> or be, you those okay? are the three options. Like, like, do we need to take you, you had, to the emergency room yeah, currently? Did, did you watch that one Navy SEAL video that guy speaking at graduation? Or you guys remember that video? Make, oh, make make yeah, the number one thing to do, make your bed in the morning. <laughs> See, I make the bed every day because I'm the last one to leave the house. I know, because yeah. you're a total fucking spat. I'm the last one to leave the house too, and I never make the bed. And like the rare times I do make the bed, I kind of do it shittily. But the other day I made the bed and like did it nice where I even like folded the tops of the covers. Yeah, but she didn't how, say shit. How you do one thing is how you do everything though. If you do it, sh- if you make the bed shittily, you're just going to do everything shittily. That's or just not true or at do, all. Do it, or do it smartly. So number one, I'm going to get into it later. No, yeah, you're, you're completely right. So why build it up to just tear it down? Number two is I saw a TikTok somewhere that it's actually good to not make your bed right away. Because then all your body heat from the last night gets trapped if you make the bed and it can make your your sheets more unsanitary. So mm. it's actually good to not make your bed. So then it airs out. Your algorithm is dialed. That's a fun spin zone for you. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how true that <laughs> is. I think you could do the fate thing, like instead of like running for the airplane, like I'm not gonna make my bed because it's not fate. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fate didn't make me. Jeez. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bow to my bed like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kiss the ring of my <laughs> bed. It's not fate. It's not fate. 
Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, one thing that our wives should think is impressive is like being able to buy them a gift without them giving us any ideas on what they Yeah. Because that, I mean, like, that takes pure skill. I mean, I think my wife, if I, if I did that, <laughs> would think that was impressive, though. I think she would be impressed. True. Well, yes. That's a good point. So now, so now you're just saying stuff that our wives think are impressive. I mean, it's two people out of the entire. I know, but so I don't know. Your, your, I think your wife would be impressed by that. I don't really think she would. Mm. Because it, it, she even says throughout the year, she'll like make hints at stuff that she does like that. So, I just apparently so don't. So you're keep saying up on. that she actually would be more impressed if you bought her something that she did tell you she wanted. No. So your wife just isn't impressed by gifts whatsoever then? Well, no, she, she's impressed if I get her a gift that like it, something that, she, okay, this is a sweet gift that she had never dropped a hint at. Yeah, but this the segment is stuff that doesn't impress them. So you just said that that does impress them. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, making a bunch of money, my wife thinks impressive. Um, how getting I, her pregnant? How that she was impressed by that. <laughs> Taking her that on one, vacation, th- running that one through my head, it, it it checked out perfectly. Yeah, I get it. We're we're in the weeds already in this segment. I, my wife doesn't think it's impressive when I can guess the end of the movie. She hates it, oh. actually. It did, not only does she think it's unimpressive, she fucking hates when I do it. My wife's the opposite. She looks up the end of the movie before we watch mm. it. Yeah, I Or the that. show. Does that she is, tell you it? If I ask. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. What's the point? Mm-hmm. You know? Psychotic, almost. It's like but, watching a football game, you know the results. Right. That would be my wife, sweet if you were betting on it, though. My, oh my wife God. also doesn't think it's impressive when I can pump out a poop in like three minutes and be clean, <laughs> you know? Mine doesn't think it's impressive when I can take a 20-minute poop. Yeah, that either. <laughs> yeah. Basically, she's not impressed by me pooping whatsoever. Yeah. You can pump a three-minute shit out. It, it's kind of like the morning I woke up at 6 a.m. randomly to watch Michael oh, Strahan shit. get launched into <laughs> orbit. It happens about once a year. You know, it's just... Everything lines up. Do you there's like a, there's you have- a squatty potty in the bathroom? <laughs> Whatever you ate the previous two days just aligned everything perfectly. It comes out clean. It's a, it's one a, wipe, nothing yeah. there, and you're out. I mean, I get that, but w- even so, I, wouldn't you just want to sit there for like another Hang 10 out. minutes and just like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> lie a little bit? But <sighs> look around. Yeah, I, I, sh- I really sh- but it's like one time you're like, this is, happens once a year. And then I got all this. I got an extra 17 minutes <laughs> in my day now. You know, you're talking about season of the day, fucking carpe diem over here. And you're telling me I should sit there for 17 minutes. For you. Well, I mean, especially if you're up at sea. Once yeah. I have a kid, I think that'll change. But yeah, she doesn't think that's impressive at all. Yeah. Uh, she also doesn't think it's impressive when I can be completely disorganized but know where everything is. They, that is a good one. Because like I get upset when she moves my disorganization. Correct. And it, it's impressive how unorganized we are, but we know where everything is. My dad was also the king of this. Yeah. His desk in our basement was there were so many papers but then he but then he would just like lift a couple up and then boom snag that one out of there Mm -hmm. and then my mom would come and clean it up a little bit and he'd be fucking pissed that's how i am with my tools like back over she'll need a certain she'll need a flathead screwdriver and she's looking where the tool should be and they're like no 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 it's not there it's actually in a drawer over here it's in the go bag yep that happens with me with drill bits. Mm. It's like I have a few drill bits in the junk drawer. I got some in the closet, some in the garage, and you just got to know where they are, mm-hmm. which is impressive in its own. Yeah. Not once have I ever told her, like, yeah, the, the flathead screwdriver is actually in a separate drawer over here. Not once she'd be like, wow, how did you know that? She'd be like, why the fuck is it over there? A more recent thing. Uh, so I'll, I'll, every once in a while, I'll spend a weekend playing video games. Mm-hmm. And when I beat a level, 
she couldn't care less. I was gonna say that, that sucks. Video yeah. games, video games yeah. they don't care about yeah. video games I mean, whatsoever. I feel like it's a trailer. The same as a trailer situation. Yes, yeah. you got to put them in that scenario. Well, to, uh, you play Madden. You know, you, your guy makes a one-handed catch, mm-hmm. and you you go to the replay. And you show her for it and <laughs> doesn't care at all. Uh, one that's, that's very so recent. Bullshit. My wife didn't give a shit that I got 14 out of the 16 for the sweet 16 in March Madness. Mm. She didn't really. Care. That, oh, did? Okay. That I mean, that Thank is you. That's, it's imp- it all fell to shit after last night. But I thought that was impressive. And she did not care. Yeah. You're not a basketball guy. No. Nope. Yeah. Like anything sports related, really. I think yeah. I think it's impressive. Yep. Yeah, lifting weights is another one. I think she kind of tra- she, she like I'll be like, oh, I lifted this much weight today, and then she's just like, oh, cool. Yeah. 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 My Take wife was up. a power lifter in high school, so she'd think it's sweet. Oh, really? Yeah. I but I have tried the technique of like that'd be like me putting two of you on my back and squatting that five times. And then she's kind of like, Oh yeah, I guess that is sure a lot. A, I mean, yeah, it's good. I mean, she'd be like, no, that's actually not a lot of weight if it's two of me. Yeah. yeah and that's then you get into the weeds of talking. About oh, dude, it was weight. a lot of weight. It was like one and a half use. <laughs> <laughs> Dick yourself a hole. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My wife does not think it's sweet at all. When I discover a shortcut, like if I find a new, a new route to work, that's short, like two minutes shorter. She doesn't think that's impressive. And I love it. What's the most recent shortcut that you found to your doomsday bunker? Um, not gonna tell you. So you're going you're going down highway ten. <laughs> nope. What's the shortcut from highway no, you gotta 10? Stay off of me? You gotta take a... Okay. I okay. thought I was gonna get him there, Jerry. Yeah. I thought I was gonna get him. <laughs> okay, well at least we ain't the at least we ain't going on highway ten then. No, well, it that's is what I want it's think. off of highway ten for sure. Wait, no, he said you gotta stay off major highways. Mm-hmm. Oh, so he's taking for- back roads. Especially, so we talked about this, and I said there was more likely like a, an invasion scenario. I didn't. I need to clarify. It's more likely a martial law scenario where everything's on lockdown and people are against people, like us. You know, for the listeners who don't know what martial law is, will you explain? Uh, it's that? basically when local governments take over because we're in a, a period of chaos, anarchy. Like, yeah, like mm. martial law, like the police take over essentially, like. They're supposed to. Your rights are pretty much waived. Yep. Gotcha. So you think that that's more likely than... Than North Dakota getting invaded by a foreign force. What about zombies? I don't think that's super likely. Okay. But as a prepper that you are, prepping isn't just for one scenario. It's for all scenarios. I'm a selective prepper. Okay. One of those uh, snooty preppers, Uh I guess. A la carte. Yep. <laughs> who, who scoffs at the the option of a zombie apocalypse my wife doesn't think the amount of plans i have for the apocalypse is impressive at all i don't think it's impressive either, yeah. tyler i'm gonna be honest with you I you mean, know I, what no i, I should i no you know right? what i should say i do think it's impressive but i don't think it's necessary that's fair that's that's a that's better fair. way to say it yeah it is my wife impressive. doesn't think either it is impressive how you're doing it silently too. Like I don't even want to know some of the stuff that you have planned that you just haven't revealed to us. That's good. But you want to have it and not need it versus not have it and need it. Perfect. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> you nailed Peace it. Peace of mind. I hope yeah. I never I'm have not to use against- any of that stuff. I started my my brain was going wild after we talked about that. Yeah. Watch. I also my wife doesn't think it's impressive. When she's watching The Bachelor in episode one, I'll walk into the room, watch it for 10 minutes and go, that girl wins. And then I end up being right. She doesn't think that's impressive at all. I mean, that's kind of like the guessing the ending of the movie. Yeah. Thing. It's like, what? Come on, dude. That was. Is this. I mean, can you do that on every season? I did no, that this I've, year. I've but been, I haven't done it every season, but I, they at least make it to like the top three. Yeah. This year I, I did the exactly what you said when they did the intros. I was like, she's going to win and she got second. Yeah. It's just whoever has the biggest boobs. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of the that's time a, it is just the most conventionally good looking person yeah. that's there. Mm-hmm. And that also doesn't scream. I have tons of daddy issues mm-hmm. ends up winning. So if you can just identify early who's not insane, they usually make it to the top three. How many do they usually start with? 30-ish. Damn. It's a lot. It's a lot of 
daddy issues. Yeah, but through. you also can sort <laughs> it's through at a least bunch 30, of them. Yeah, 30 yeah. daddy issues. But you also can sort through them because there's a lot of them that don't get airtime. So like probably like 10 of them yeah. you can eliminate right sure. away. Yeah, night one, it's there's one person that gets an interview that gets booted and that's it. Yeah. The rest are just people you haven't even seen. Okay. I have to try that. <laughs> Sounds like a good show. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so wait, what's the show called? <laughs> right, dog. <laughs> uh, my wife doesn't think anything I do in the golf world is impressive. It sucks. She, you know, my wife. It's not. She doesn't think it's impressive. She's more relieved when I do well on the golf course because I <laughs> come home happier. Yeah, I mean, I, I, when I'm things go Anna, bad, she's like, okay, well, the rest of the fucking day is shot because he's gonna be pissed off. <laughs> I always get like a pity, like if I come home, like, hey, I birdie birdied holes one and two today. She's like, oh, good job, honey. My wife would like go. A, my wife would go. Well, what the fuck happened on the rest of the <laughs> thank God, thank God. Bogeyed. Yeah. Bogeyed the rest of them. Got pissed on one. Hey, Birdie's first two and he bogeyed the rest. Still a pretty decent score. He started off two under. You're shooting in the 80s then, I think, mm-hmm. are you? 88. Okay, the one. Yeah, so, not math guy. 14 over. 16, 86. Yeah, that's a pretty good score. Yeah, it's actually. not bad. I'm impressed. I mean, that's a, I, yeah, I mean, just on the front line. Yeah. <laughs> now imagine if how good we would all feel if they just added one stroke to every hole. How awesome golf would be, be great. Right? <laughs> Fucking great. Par fours, fives, Par six. and sixes. We would all be pretty fucking good. We imagine just, if we just do that. Imagine ourselves. if yeah, I was just gonna say, imagine if you got to decide the par yeah. on every hole. <laughs> I think this. 145 yard par three should actually be a that par would, five. Today. Hey, for you guys' uh, little page you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> Miles doesn't think it's impressive. Uh, he doesn't. <laughs> uh, it's called the Double Boy uh, Show. Can we call it podcast? Uh, for you guys' <laughs> cute little side project. <laughs> Is that like a school thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys' little hobby project you do on the side that you get way overpaid for. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you could do d- the uh, a par dice game where every hole mm. you roll a dice to see what the par is on that hole. That would be fun. That's a good idea. I'll add that to the list. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea by me. One through six. Yeah. And then see what your score is at the end. Shoot, it sucked to get long par five roll two. Yeah, I get a fucking par six on a get, on a par three. That would be sick. I'm writing it down. You guys keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of other things my wife should think is impressive. I mean, me putting the Christmas lights up just seamlessly straight across the <laughs> just just I mean, fucking uh just tight. T- Tight lines, tight balls. I think if someone's got <laughs> tight lines and tight bulbs on their Christmas lights, it's very impressive yeah, to me. Especially when there's snow on the roof and it's a little bit slippery and I can do it. I can get tight lines, tight bulbs without falling off the roof. Yeah, you know, like Clark Griswold. Exactly. Well, I, yeah. I actually would venture to say he didn't get them very tight. If you look at the movie, it's kind of got loose lines, loose bulbs. Yeah, mine are tight lines, tight bulbs. This yeah. is more of a volume game than it was a precision. Yeah, it's definitely quality over quality. Now, uh, <laughs> Quantity is also impressive. If you if you did a Clark Griswold and every piece of your house had lights on it, that would also be impressive. Be kind of sick, actually. D- just a different game. Looks playing. horrible. Just a big day, light though. blanket. Yeah. <laughs> All the green lines. <laughs> so, what about you, Jared? You got any other ones? That was the video game thing and uh, taking out the garbage when not asked. <laughs> That's another one. I'm above and beyond duties. I- yeah. <laughs> I'm with. I don't. I don't think they think it's above and beyond. (laughs) No, definitely not. Definitely. But like, if I'm doing the, if I load the dishwasher, run the dishwasher, and there's still like five dishes that are dirty that wouldn't fit, and I wash them by hand, I think it's a little impressive. (laughs) She wouldn't do that. Something that my wife actually does think impressive is when I remember we have plans. Mm. 
Like if I'm like, if I text her in the morning and be like, what time do I need to be home for our dinner that we have planned with these people tonight? She's like, <laughs> no shit. You remember. <laughs> I, uh, on accident, I don't know, it was probably Tuesday of this week. I had said, or of last week, I had said, well, what do we, we got anything going on this weekend? And it's Easter weekend. We have something on Saturday and Sunday. Com- just completely forgot. Oof. Oh, doghouse. I, yeah. <sighs> Sleeping on the couch after that. So. That was a tough one. Yeah, I not the same thing. I was in charge of coming up with the plan. And because like two grandmas asked for Easter dinner at the same time. And Becca's like, all right, can you deal with that and figure out what we're gonna do? And then I didn't. And then yesterday one of the grandmas called and it's like, What's the plan? She looks at me, she's like, You haven't fucking told them the plan yet. Ooh. Ooh. Dog Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you like the couch. Yeah. Hope you like chicken for dinner because that's what you're having. (laughs) Drier than the desert. And it's not going to be wet. (laughs) She heard that segment and now she just doesn't make chicken. No, I bet bet her chicken's great. I bet. It's not. (laughs) Why don't you tell her to face her fears? No. She's like, well, if you don't like my chicken, I'm just not going to fucking make it for you. That sounds fun. Yeah, it sounds like you locked up the right girl. Yeah. Holds on to grudges. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, what she should do is just like just throw the chicken in the oven. And say, all right, whenever you want it done, you take it out. <laughs> medium rare. Yeah, <laughs> chicken's one of them. Fin- yeah, no, you can have medium. You can have a little pink fine. in the middle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was on vacation, uh, there are two spring slash winters ago. I was in California, same place. Went to a restaurant the next day. I got like food poisoning of some sort. I don't know what it could have just been a regular flu, but it was coming out of both ends and it ruined my whole vacation. So then the joke was that that restaurant gave me, you know, the sickness. So then this time they were all like, well, we can't go here because Miles got sick, whatever. And I looked him sore in the eyes. I said, I got to face my fears. (laughs) We're going back to that fucking restaurant. Were you nervous? And then we did. Or the back of got cheese. a salad, yeah. <laughs> and then I woke up the next day with a gout flare up. <laughs> oh, so now the next time that I go, yeah, I'm gonna conquer my fear. The trilogy. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna I eat be, there every <laughs> fucking night. <laughs> it's getting worse though. Uh, no, the the coming out of both ends was way worse. It's getting okay. better. So wow. hopefully next time I just get like a hangnail or something like that. <laughs> From the table. Paper cut on the menu or yeah, something like that. Something, yeah, something easy. They drop tricks on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe I just get a lap full of margarita. <laughs> yeah, or just like a self-induced hangnail. Hey, but then like, the I'm margarita's on them. There. I'm way too hungover. That place gave you a headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for next time. <laughs> Ouch. Well, should we take a break? Sure. You know what's impressive to me? Go on. Going to holiday gas stations and only getting three. Oh, uh, turkey, sausage, egg, and cheese flatbread. Only getting three of those. If you can. Self-control. Yeah. Self-control. Only get three of them. You also save some for the rest of us. You know, that is true. You're thinking about the next guy Mm -hmm. coming through. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so this. Turkey, sausage, egg, and cheese flatbread, which has 14 grams of protein and only 300 calories. Hell yeah, dude. Only 300 calories? Mm-hmm. That is something that I'm impressed by. Yeah, I mean, that they were able to jam all that flavor and deliciousness into yeah. only 300 calories. Mm-hmm. Jam all that protein in there. Yeah, it's just, turkey's great. Jam all those flatbreads in there. <laughs> Flatbread is just pizza, right? That's flat. <laughs> yeah, what is it pizza flat there's just no crust it's a crustless pizza <laughs> <laughs> so if you're worried about like oh flat bread sounds fancy just call it a crustless pizza so say it again now with that verbiage uh turkey sausage egg and cheese crustless pizza pizza yeah yeah, yeah. yeah nailed it damn like, like a breakfast pizza yeah. 300 calories a crustless breakfast pizza yeah crustless, crustless breakfast yeah. pizza mm. yeah mm. So, guys, if you're hungry and you're looking for only 300 calories, 
which Ryan is he's been trying to watch his figure well, lately. And if you want to load up on protein. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Well, still sure. only consuming 300 mm-hmm. calories. Good for gains. Great for gains. It's also it's, it's, 28 grams. It's yeah. also great for my goal to eat 35 less calories a day <laughs> to lose three pounds in a year. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm able to add that to my repertoire. <laughs> well, yeah, if you get three of them, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a full day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, because usually I eat 935 calories yeah. <laughs> on a normal basis, but now I'm only eating 900 and I'm on my way. I'm on my way. It's a very normal diet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Turkey, sausage, egg, too. and cheese, biscuit, flatbread. No, no biscuit. <laughs> Is there egg and cheese on it, though? Yep. Yeah, I knew that. So, guys, get your low-cal sausage, turkey, egg, Cheese, crustless pizza pizza at holiday gas stations. All right, so Ann texted me back. She reminded me of something that happened on my trip that I need to discuss with you guys. Why are rental car companies so poorly run? (laughs) What do you mean? What what do you mean? What do I mean? You don't think waiting in line for an hour and a half to get the car you didn't sign up for online is it, inefficient? It's unbelievable, <laughs> is it not? <laughs> they never know what cars are in the lot. They never how they ha, they have to have an inventory of cars they own, correct? And they have to know exactly where they are at any point. Why can't the people at the desk get that information from them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's always like less than three people working. Yeah. yeah. So I showed up to the airport. I luckily, as most white people say, looks like we beat the rush. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, I beat the rush. Got here at the right time. Yeah. yeah. Good thing I didn't stop to pee before I walked over here. Because quite literally it lined up right after me but i still had five or six people ahead of me and i'm watching sitting there you know as you're waiting in line you're kind of like as stuff's happening you kind of look around the other people waiting and you kind of give like a little like eye eye roll to the other guy and then he gives you an eye roll like jesus christ (laughs) so we're doing that i finally get up to the kiosk because it is night it is a sigh of relief though when there's a big line that stacks up and then a person comes from the back room to also help. Oh, that's great. That's huge. I also know. I almost think that they only stock a few people up front. So then you can get that sigh of relief. <laughs> yeah. Like they may have 15 people waiting back there. <laughs> it's like a bullpen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but they do it. You got to, walkout songs. <laughs> to like manage their ex, your expectations a little bit. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the racket they're doing. But again, that would require way too much planning on their Correct. part. And they don't plan dick. <laughs> Like their whole job is logistics and they just said, you know what? We could plan and we could keep track of stuff, but let's just watch the world burn and not do that. Well, it's like when you book it online too, there's a lot of questions you answer to get a specific vehicle. What's the point of those if when you show up, they just ignore every question you answered? I know. I know. I know. So I get up to the thing. The guy, you know, probably mid 20s, late 20s, smoking and joking a little bit. I did all my stuff online. So mine's a little quicker than like the old folks that are like, we need a car. (laughs) Or I called and talked to someone and they should have a reservation, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to go through this fast. He goes, all right. And they always do this, like to act like they're doing you a huge favor. They're like, he goes, I'm going to find you something nice. And I wanted to be like, you shouldn't be having to find anything. There should be a car assigned to my reservation. Then he leaves. <laughs> Smoke break. He's smoking and joking. And I'm not talking to the back room. He literally walked in front of the thing and walked out to the parking lot. <laughs> Just way to go find you something nice. He had to do an <laughs> ocular confirmation of what they had in the no, lot. He yeah. had to just go see what they had in the lot. He didn't even know if he could give me something nice. He's just saying that to make me feel good. He's gone for five to seven minutes. And then he comes back. And that's a long time. And then he comes back. I was a little uh, nervous. No keys in hand. <laughs> So then he comes back. He's like, all right, boss, which kind of pissed me off a little bit at this point. You don't call really? me boss. Some people would like that, actually. You know? All right, boss. We 
we got a car for you, but it's coming from the other lot. And I'm like, how many lots you guys got? <laughs> yeah. he's, so, lots. so he's like, <laughs> so, so then he just goes, so I'll just come find you when it's here. <laughs> He was just going to let me go anywhere in the airport and he was going to go find me. <laughs> so no wonder this is taking so long. Once the, you're taking reservations, which takes long, then you're having to, when the car does come up, go and find these people. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to go stand by that red sign over there. Okay. You come find me. And that happens. I get over to the red sign. Turns out this is like a doctor's office. Everyone, this is just a waiting room for people <laughs> waiting for their cars. <laughs> Dead, it was like there was probably 30 people all waiting for their cars and people in red shirts running back and forth to the parking lot, this and that. Hell yeah. <laughs> I waited for 45 minutes for my car. Oh. They must have went to the dealership and bought it. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, hey, you just need to take this for a test drive for the next uh, 13 days. <laughs> It's not ideal. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And while I'm waiting in line, because we had to, we had check bags, my pregnant wife, because I was on the reservation, I got to check in. And if I didn't get in line, it would have been another hour and a half. So I jump in line. We had four bags, two golf bags and two check bags. My pregnant wife, I'm watching her struggle with all of this stuff. And you don't want to leave the red sign because you don't know when he's going to come. No, this for is you. before I even got to mm. that point. We're traveling back in time a little. Uh, so then I'm trying to do like baseball signs to her <laughs> to go get one of the carts that's over there. <laughs> and even that's a shit show. There's, it looks like a Walmart parking lot where there's just carts everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's no singular place to go get a cart. So she walks up. There's one just sitting there and walks up <gasps> and the guy's like, Oh no, that's someone's cart. And she's like looking around like what whose? Whose yeah. cart? <laughs> Do they just have like a quack quack cart back situation going on? Like fuck, if you can only reserve cars, like people can fucking reserve carts in the Yeah, That'd it's like they they got the cart systems even better than the car system. <laughs> Fighters keepers. So then she goes and gets a cart and all that. And it was like we got, you know, like you get into the airport, you fly in, you like show up early. You're like all excited. Let's go. I didn't I didn't show up early. <laughs> an hour and a half later, mm -hmm. leave the airport with the rental car. I mean, if you think Just, about it, the, the car rental industry shouldn't be hard. You put a tracker in the car. The <laughs> well, person signs I think up. I think legally you can't put trackers in cars. But they own it. But but here's the thing. You know where they are picking it up and where they are dropping it off and how long. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that it itself is enough of a tracking system to know which cars are where at what time. If anything, they, they should be able to like track like the, fl I'm sure they can, but the flights coming in like, okay, Mr. Mont pleasure is 15 minutes ahead of schedule. Let's get the car ready. Well, they, to go. they don't know your, your, you'd have to probably put in your airport reservation then because they're not connected. But even without that, like the fact that they have to go out there and, actually look at the cars with their eyes to know what's there is ridiculous like when a car gets returned it should just go into a spreadsheet that this car is back but then, the and then other they can look at the thing like okay this car's fucking back but then the other crazy part is it's up to the mood of whatever the person behind the desks is <laughs> To decide which car you get, even though you, like I've, I've watched people online. grab like four keys and go uh, look at me like oh, he seems like a he seems like he maybe want a <laughs> Nissan, uh, right? Yeah, like even if like, you, oh. how many yeah. times have we signed up for a specific car like on a work trip and then not got that? Well, specific now car? they just go uh, Chevy Malibu or something similar is what <laughs> they put on <laughs> yeah, there. That's now, what they're copying. Uh, you want to know what happened to me last time I rented a car? My What's wife and I, they just, they just, they said, you can just go pick whatever one's out of the lot. <laughs> <laughs> They've done that to me too. So, I mean, that's like, it. But again, what they're just making it worse for themselves. Right. All it would take is one person, one rich guy who could afford to buy a fleet of cars mm -hmm. yeah, or a good banker to start a car company that had good back end systems and they would destroy every other rental car company in the world. Yeah, they have that. It's called U-Haul. 
<laughs> you <U-Haul. laughs> they're Renting dialed, it, I think. They are. Every time I've ever rented a moving truck or been involved with a moving truck rental, it's been smooth and efficient. Yeah. Every single time. So we're U-Haul's we're looking dialed. we're yeah. looking right fucking at you, U Haul. Get some cars. Get rid of the trucks. I don't rent trucks enough to be able to take the advantage of it. <laughs> get some cars. Get a fleet going. And let's pump people through this thing. You've already got the infrastructure. U-Haul to U-Haul. People are dropping stuff off left and right. You've got the yeah. parking lot for it. You ever thought about it going to straight Turo? I've done it. We, Not great. We really. did it one time. Remember we found a needles in the backseat? Yeah, it was, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and if, because they will drop it off at a location, but like they can't really drop it off at the airport for you. Mm-hmm. So you then have to go from the airport. You have to take an Uber to your gotcha. car. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some random house. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly that's literally what, it what we did. <laughs> I just had to like, and double. Tyler got in the back and like pulled the like thing to like cup holder. And there was literally needles. <laughs> yeah. Used needles. In the car. I might've been on a Zempic or something. Never know. I don't know what. what we want to think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, or they should have like you should pay two hundred bucks extra, and then like your rental car is on the tarmac right by the plane. <laughs> that would That'd be, be phenomenal, sick, actually. Though, <laughs> like, like fly, flying private, you just roll right up, drive it, drive in private. <laughs> how come we don't With, hype that up as much? Like flying private, sick, but we drive private all the time. It's true. Gas is a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't require a, a trained professional to do it. Like I'm gonna tell people when I go on a road trip that I'm driving private. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna start doing that too. Yeah, yeah. How you get into the bar tonight? I'm driving private. <laughs> Wait, we talked about Uber. Your private, your driver by driver's yeah. license. <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but in a perfect world, it should be you get off the plane, you walk directly to the parking garage with all the rental cars, and you just because we do it all online now. You should just be able to go through all the processes online. You walk up. They go, hello, Mr. Montpellier. Here's your car, wee wee. They hand you the keys and you just go. Mm-hmm. And it's the exact one you sign up for online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your mail sitting in the front seat. Mail sitting in the front seat. <laughs> Ice <laughs> mountains in the console. How's your mail in the car if you already opened it on the plane, Jared? It's true. It's yeah, you could even go a step further. They yeah. should even <laughs> they should even just put like what parking spot the car's in. So you roll up, you get your keys, and then you know exactly where you're yeah. going. It's kind of like trying to find something like a hardware store that puts the aisle on like on there, wherever it's at. Mm-hmm. How is flying post 9-11 easier and more efficient than getting a fucking car? Well, I mean, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but it sounds like we need a catastrophic event to happen <laughs> within the rental car community to change things. Yeah. Maybe like a rental and car. And I'm not saying pilot. that we should do that, but that's probably what it's going to take at this point. <laughs> You know, I we, hope to God it doesn't happen and we can reform other ways, but <laughs> that's need a, the way we're headed. We need a it's car rental Robin Hood to go in there and just exploit all the problems with this system until they fix them. Mm-hmm. Someone's stealing cars. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the employees weren't skimming cars off the top. Yeah. That's why it's For like sure. it is. Yeah. <laughs> they, each, I, I feel like take each... Take one home. Yeah, like, <laughs> It's probably what's caused all the disarray is they just take one home every night and bring it back the next that's day. The, that's what they get paid in. They get paid in cars. Yeah. Free gas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's always at least one pissed off customer at every like rental car booth. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially when they're fucking and clack, now- clacking on the keyboard. Like, what are you typing in? <laughs> yeah. I typed all of this in online when I signed up. Let me get back there. Yeah. They should like each airline should just have its own car rental company, like Delta Car Rental or whatever. Tie it to your reservation. That's not a bad idea. Fucking, it's right right outside the door from baggage claim. The other thing that I've noticed because I've this last year, I feel like I've had a lot of rental cars that I've needed to get. This, it's this is gonna go in the category of really minor inconveniences that if the rental car company could just do this, it would be sweet. But every time I get into a rental car now. And you try and hook up your car play or your phone <laughs> to the car, it's always full from mm-hmm. the previous people who drove the car. Yeah. And then you gotta go remove Kevin's iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, or there's some weird names on yep. there. And it's just a minor inconvenience that I wish we could do away with. Why can't cars just have unlimited slots for phones? Yeah. Or they do like a factory reset or something. Would be nice, but mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for these car companies to wake up and fucking figure it out. But <laughs> freaking. And it, it's the problem is, is there's one big company that buys all the smaller rental car companies and f- makes them terrible. Too. I, I yeah, do it's think it's funny when old people get all upset. Like there's the long line, right? For Hertz. And then the Hertz employee pulls somebody over to the enterprise counter and they'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I don't think yeah. those are. That's a good. Comparison. I don't know. It's more budget. National. I don't know who owns what. Avis. But. Yeah. You stay involved. I don't either. Yeah. Well, I think National Budget and Avis are all one company. Horrible names, too. So it is. The old people do are like, well, I, I don't, I don't have an Avis. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Like, yeah, we're all the same shit. It's like, well, why don't you just make a one rental car mm-hmm. company? Then you fuck. <laughs> you fuck it. It's, I just. It's harder to launder money under this, one. But the, yeah. no one's talking about it. If any other industry acted like this, there would be riots. Yeah. Imagine. Imagine if you went into a restaurant and you're like, <laughs> I'll do the uh, cheeseburger and fries. And they're like, okay, well, let me see what we got. And they ran back to the kitchen. Like, all we got is salmon and asparagus. You're like, this one. Yeah. so it was like, like, think about ordering at McDonald's and you're just, no, like, I actually got called over hey, the Bob. phone and you confirmed that. Okay. <laughs> No, then they sit down to eat and then they come back to you. <laughs> yeah, or like, I want cheeseburger fries. Well, I'm going to upgrade you for free. I'm going to get you sweet potato fries. And you're like, I don't fucking want sweet potato fries. <laughs> yeah, then they just lay it down there and don't say anything. Like, can I take it or no? <laughs> I don't know. Fucking do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyways, we can get on to some patrons' questions, but that's been boiling inside of me for a little bit. I probably felt good to get it out, though. Yeah, yeah, it really did. So, if someone, and maybe we're wrong, maybe they do have this, it is more complicated than what we think. So, anyone's in the rental car industry, let us know what's going on behind the scenes. Absolutely can't be. I mean, man on the moon. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Ryan. Put a man on the moon in 1969. We can't figure out the rental car industry. <laughs> yeah, now it is to the point now where I have more stress about getting a rental car than I do flying. Mm-hmm. Which never oh, used easily. to be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, floppy desk. What's something you always do when you visit a new city? <coughs> I, don't. I walk into my hotel room. I whip <laughs> open the blinds and I put my foot up on the windowsill and I say, "This city." <laughs> it, it, it sounds like a bit. He does it every, he does every, every time we go. That, every time. Yeah. This the best city. is when you can beat him to it. Yep. And then it kind of it kind of fucks with the rhythm a little bit. And then he just his whole trip's thrown off. <laughs> um, when I go to a new city, I'm not like an explorer, you know. Like, I feel like talking to Charlie, he's like, oh, yeah, I saw that there's this nice walking path. And I went <laughs> and looked at the scenery. It's like, I just don't do that. For me, it's more so about finding a good place to eat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I go to a new yeah. city. I like to look at the reviews and stuff, which is its own art in its own, because you're never going to find a Yelp review restaurant that's got five stars, because the only people that are reviewing restaurants the people who had a bad time mm-hmm. like what have you ever been like i had a great time i'm gonna go leave a yelp review right well then right. At, at bars like finding bars for belly up i found too that you cannot trust five star reviews because it's just the locals spamming it yeah yeah because the owner was like oh i think we mm-hmm. need to get more reviews yeah, so a free drink for pictures for help a lot yep. you know the vibes of the thing and then usually anywhere between 3.8 and four stars seems to be like a good place to land on yeah but uh, I actually did this on this trip. I found a diner that was delicious. That was four stars right by our place. And they're like, how do we find this place? I'm like, well, it just, you know, you got to know how to look. Yeah. It was right by his place. How do we find it? Yeah, it's just like a block down. Uh, we, <laughs> we drive by. We drove by. It. <laughs> I have a rule on vacation. No, no chain restaurants. Yeah. I've kind of started to yeah. adopt that. Yeah. Nothing you can get back home. Yep. Yeah. Like if I'm in California and I've never been in and out, Go to In and Out. That's sure. fine. Yeah. That's a chain that, but after that, no more In and Out. Yeah. In Rome. Yep. Put all garden. <laughs> yeah. It's mostly try new restaurants, is the big one when I go to new cities. Because mm-hmm. it, it is tough, though, when you do find one you like and you go back to that city, you kind of want to find something new, but you're like, 
I so only go to this yeah, place when yeah. I'm here. <laughs> right. I know a great spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does feel good when you recommend a spot like that. Someone goes to it and then they like it. Yeah, that's yeah. a good feeling. There was a place in Minneapolis that I went to, and the manager knew who I was, knew I was the Ubetcha guy, and was all you know. I talked to him for a little bit, and I went back like six, seven, eight months later, and he rem- remembered our interaction, and I remembered him, and so he hooked us up and got us like a free drinks or whatever and it's like okay well now i just want to go here every time <laughs> yeah fucking free creme brulee yeah that's the great spot you know now mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um yeah miles actually told me to come here because you would give free drinks <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i'll do a lot i'll do a long island to start it out <laughs> oh, long island. what's your most expensive drink i'll yeah, just have give, one give of me those. your most expensive most booze most expensive. i'll do a <laughs> shot of your mccallan 40 <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you're wondering, I was at a restaurant, a fancier restaurant, for one shot of Macallan 40 year was $750. Ooh. So I try to convince people I was with to do credit card roulette. <laughs> you know? But we didn't do they it. They didn't take the bait. Yeah. I'd have done it. I have been so fucking out of that so fast. <laughs> I I would have been too. <laughs> um, yeehaw! You're on vacation now. <laughs> and there's just two credit cards. His his and mine, and like I don't know. We know whose is whose, so who's gonna pick? <laughs> no, you have the you hold it out like a stack of cards. Let the the server pick. Oh. Well, so what what you do though is you have the server start with the ones who don't have to pay, so it builds up the mm. suspense. Mm. So the first one you throw down is out. And it just comes down to the last two. It's more fun. Oh. <laughs> um, yeehaw. How would you improve lawnmower technology? More cup holders. Yep. Probably an iPad station. That I can watch a show while I'm out there. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Auto steer. It's all about the art. Uh, AC seats. AC uh, seats. Oh, my God. One. I do. I would like one that has an umbrella thing. Mm. You can stay out of the sun yep. for the ones that don't have a cab. Yeah, yeah. Uh, built in side cooler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you got a little, nice little compact one to put in between your legs, it's fine. But I uh, would like a way for if you're bagging it to not have to empty the bags. To, where you just like, or like pull a lever and it just dumps it out. Yeah. Or something like, like that where like you could just maybe you got to, maybe you got maybe to build this into your property. You know, like, when they're dumping grain, don't they just put it in the ground and then it will? Well, sometimes they just dump it through the bottom of the truck. I I don't know yeah. much about farming. It goes in there and then they elevator or thing up into the storage grain bin. Yeah, but just drive over a grate with a big bucket in there, and you just press a lever and it dumps mm. it all down in That'd there and you can keep driving. Well, that they they do sweet. make some pull behind beggars where you just pull a lever, it drops all the grass out, you pull it and it closes it up. They uh, don't work though if it's clo- like if it's if, clogged. If the, yeah, yeah, so it's it's always finicky. Mm-hmm. Also, a, a way to mow wet grass without it getting clogged. Yeah. yeah. Fuck I don't know man. how we figure how would we figure that out. Like a dryer all. system. Yeah. I mean, again, man on the moon. I mean, it's simple, <laughs> but I would like a few more seat adjustments. Maybe it'd be lean back a little bit. I could all lawnmower seats are just stay. You can move it forward. You can move it backwards. There's nothing with the incline or decline. Not necessarily a lawnmower thing, but a trimmer. Why don't we just have a trimmer that's like a lawnmower that has we- little wheels on it that keeps it at a certain height so you can put it up and down? Because it doesn't matter how much I trim, I'm still scalping the gro- oh, ground sure. a couple times. For sure. So why don't we just have like a a thing that just does the trimming duties that's on wheels that doesn't go too low that you can move it up and down and then you just walk around like a vacuum. Well, the the answer to that is because to extend the trimmer, you have to tap it and you you have your things be too long. But all they got to do is make it so the the trimmer wire comes out with a button instead. Boom. Then it's like a it's basically like a vacuum that you just walk along your fence with. Yeah. Or around your trees with. It's actually a pretty yeah, good idea. Yeah, it's not idea. a bad idea. <laughs> I think like a, we could, we could uh, yeah, we could label it as the the scalp free. Yeah, no scalping <laughs> whatsoever. 
take the tear free model away from the uh, big shampoo. Mm. <laughs> I think like a Segway style lawnmower would be kind of sick. They, so they, they do make standing have that, mowers, yeah. but they're not like lean forward Segway style. Yeah, no, I've seen like the, it's a big ass push mower that you stand on and stand behind, yeah. right? Yeah. Not you, a push mower. You stand on it and then it's, it's like a zero, turn. zero turn controls right in front of you like this. Okay. So they kind of have that. So it's close. Bit. Like Segway, you have to lean to move. You're not leaning to move. But he wants one. it like the old school manual mowers that just rotate and it cuts the grass. Uh, Those are kind of sick, like the spinning blade. Oh, that'd be really kind of cool. Nice. You're like you're above the blade. Hopefully you don't yeah. fall off forwards. Or imagine like one of those hoverboards that kids have, which is like, but it's a mower. Yeah, <laughs> that would be kind of sick. The easy way to get your kid out there. That, if, <laughs> do so they have like off-road hoverboards? Because that'd be a great like way to a push. Like a Segway is pretty much that. But like with yeah. no handles though. So like you can push mo on your hoverboard. <laughs> oh, I'm sure someone's done that. You think? Because those things aren't really, they're not strong enough to they got get some you through torque. grass. <laughs> yeah, you get full battery on that baby. She got some power. <laughs> You get some big tires on that sucker. You could do some damage on it. Carver That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, two fun facts. Uh, Shaq only scored one three pointer. Like his whole career. Yeah, like-, like I can say, I don't think I've ever seen him shoot a three pointer before. Mm-hmm. So I- he only shot one, or only ever made one. Made one. How Besides many did f- he shoot? I don't have that data. Besides a free throw, I don't think I've ever seen him shoot a jumper. Yeah, it's all post moves. It's kind of wild, actually. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Was I, it like- I imagine the crowd went wild when he made that. <laughs> can you Google it and see if we can find the video? And it was probably like a blowout game. He was just fucking around. Yeah, like was it last second, Jarrett, where he had to get the ball off? Or was it like in rhythm? Jack's only three pointer is when he was really young too. Super skinny. Gotta add. Gotta add. Fuck. It was with the magic. Oh, his last second. Whoa, oh. bank shot. Oh, not as cool. That's pretty good. Look at that shot. <laughs> it was so close to missing it too. <laughs> so One-handed. ugly. Oh my god. Pure luck. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That is a that is an interesting fact. Yeah. Fun. Well, it's more interesting than okay. Than it was <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, it was fun to watch the video. <laughs> that was the only part that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, you also didn't have how many he attempted either. Yeah, it was that would have been fun. That was under. That would have made him much more fun. I'm sorry about that. Just look it up quick, but All right. Um, the the U.S. government has 1.4 billion pounds of cheese surplus. It's all stored in the cheese cave in Missouri. <laughs> that's not real no. mm-hmm. google cheese cave in missouri it was to combat rising inflation president carter intervened on behalf of america's dairy farmers he raised the price of milk and used the agricultural act to stock the surplus stores. so there's just cheese just been aging in this cave since carter or they're continually stocking it there's the both so they're controlling the price of cheese by hoarding the supply wow hundreds of feet below the ground hundreds of thousands of pounds and it's just american cheese Mm -hmm. that's wild that's (sighs) so fun one point billion billion? there billion pounds we are one hot day away from where is this at missouri the missouri cheese disaster it's in a cave you could bubble We're up. Bu- oh, <laughs> yeah, like I did that math already. The Mer- Tyler, Missouri <laughs> cheese. You don't, yeah. If you don't think I'm constantly wondering if we're going to have any sort of disaster again, this one I think is pretty good unless all of a sudden the, it erupts. The earth cracks below and we got liquid hot magma. But then it's like we have the liquid Queso. hot magma disaster. Then we do the cheese. We got It's kind of inflation on dairy right now, isn't there? Why can't we open that baby up? Well, I don't know. I'm not. That's out of my milk is expensive at the moment. Huh? So the government's just paying whoever owns this cave to just store at. I guess that might be the easiest money ever. (laughs) Government contracts. Yeah. We got to get a government. (laughs) (laughs) We. Well, it just makes me think. What? What else are they storing? One point four billion pounds of. 
Mm. Gold. Fort Knox. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> huh. So I think that's maybe where I'd go in a zombie apocalypse. Cheese cave. I'd head right to the cheese cave. Be, are you lactose? You're so sick of cheese. You would never shit. <laughs> yeah, you'd be plugged up. You Hopefully, it's right next door to a cracker factory. <laughs> <laughs> cracker Underground cave. cracker caves. <laughs> yeah, the cracker caves next to the cheese cave next to the wine cellar. That is a. They call that's a that's a life. Well call, yeah, they call them the charcuterie caverns. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I'm going. Straight to Missouri. I'm gonna blow right past his bunker off a of highway ten. Near Frazy. Stop at Ozarks. And I'm just going to head right down to the Ozarks. <laughs> no. Scroll down a little bit. They got any more photos? <laughs> <laughs> Ronald Reagan with Reagan. a block of cheese. Okay. Wisconsinites are just rock hard. <laughs> yeah. well, it's in Missouri, so they're kind of getting cucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're sitting in the, the corner just cheese watching. Cheese cuck. <laughs> Did did we just un? What if this cause started causing if this news got out on TikTok? It just started causing riots in Wisconsin. Give us back our yeah. cheese. We're gonna have a a storm area fifty one two point oh, but it's gonna be storm the cheese cave. <laughs> you know what they should do? They should put a restaurant above it and call it the Cheese Cave Factory. Oh, yeah. That's great. Fuck that's and it's the same idea. menu as Cheesecake Factory, just it's all cheese based. Yeah. It's meals. Yeah, it does sound a little cheesy. Little, yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. Oh. Well, Got milk. Taylor Swift. Yeah. There you go. Nothing's real. Mm-hmm. It's all just whatever the government decides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotta get that contract. Got to get a contract of some sort. So I, maybe I'll just start. I'll build a cave, mm-hmm. and then we can fill it in later. Yeah, yeah. You know, say so, hey, we got you build the cave, and the government will come. come. Yep. Quite literally, they'll I'm come. Gonna come. I'm gonna come. No, no, no. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. <laughs> uh, well, is that it, Jared? Yep. Well, that, that guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of You Betcha Radio Podcast. May your cheese be caved up. <laughs> and your wife think you're impressive somehow. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope go. so. Cheers, Ryan. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah.